Hey there, uh, hope all of you are doing good and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss the short term regulation of blood pressure. Now, what do we understand by the short term regulation of the blood pressure means the response to the changes in the blood pressure here are very quick and rapid. Okay, so the short term regulation of blood pressure is done by three important mechanisms. One is called as the baroreceptor mechanism and the baroreceptor mechanism is going to function best when the mean arterial blood pressure is fluctuating between 60 to 180 mmHg. The chemoreceptor mechanism is the second one and this is going to operate best when the mean arterial blood pressure is between 40 to 60 mmHg and the third one is called as the CNS ischemic response which operates when the mean arterial blood pressure is going to fall below 40 mmHg. Now in order to understand these reflexes we need to have an idea about the cardiovascular regulatory areas which are present in the brain stem okay and with respect to the cardiovascular regulatory areas there are two schools of thought. The first school of thought which I am going to present to you is taken directly from the book Guyton and he says that the vasomotor center is there and this vasomotor center is the one which is located in the medulla oblongata of the brainstem and the vasomotor center is having three areas one is called as the vasoconstrictor area second one is called as the vasodilator area and the third one is a sensory area which is located in the nucleus which is called as the nucleus tractus solitarius now this vasoconstrictor area the neurons which are originating from this vasoconstrictor area they are going to innervate the sympathetic nervous system and these neurons are said to be tonically active okay. they are tonically active a very important word so what do we understand by this tonically active that means these neurons are firing continuously but the rate at which they are firing is below or it is lesser so this is going to cause a continuous stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system and this is going to cause a partial state of contraction of the blood vessels under the normal conditions and this is what is called as sympathetic vasomotor tone okay and this sympathetic vasomotor tone is very much important in the maintenance of blood pressure so there is always a partial state of contraction of the blood vessels which is helping in maintenance of the blood pressure so now let's see what is going to happen whenever there is stimulation of the vasoconstrictor area so whenever there is stimulation of the vasoconstrictor area there is also stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system and the sim and the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system is going to have three important effects it is going to cause vasoconstriction it is going to cause an increase in the heart rate and it is also going to cause an increase in what is called as the force of contraction of the heart. So whenever there is an increase in the force of contraction of the heart in turn there is an increase in the cardiac output. Now next let's see the role of the vasodilator area. Unlike the vasoconstrictor area the vasodilator area is not tonically active but whenever we stimulate the vasodilatory area the vasodilatory area does two things stimulation of the vasodilatory area causes inhibition of the vasoconstrictor area and the stimulation of the vasodilatory area is going to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system that means in turn there is going to be a stimulation of the vagus so whenever there is stimulation of the vagus, what effect does it have on the heart? Whenever there is stimulation of the vagus, there is going to be a reduction in the heart rate. So this is the role of the vasodilatory area. Third one is the sensory area which is located in the nucleus tractus solitarius. And this sensory area is going to receive the information from the circulatory system. Okay. And this information from the circulatory system is conveyed to the sensory area via two cranial nerves. One is the ninth cranial nerve which is, which is nothing but the glossopharyngeal nerve 
another one is the 10th cranial nerve which is nothing but the vagus nerve now what do we understand by the circulatory system here the circulatory system basically means two important receptors which are present in the circulation one is the baroreceptors another one is the chemoreceptors now depending upon the input which is being received by this sensory area located in the nucleus tractor solitarius this sensory area has the ability to modulate the activity of both the vasodilator areas as well as the vasoconstrictor area so this is a very simplified version of one school of thought now there is another school of thought which says that in the medulla there are three areas one is of course the nucleus tractus solitarius which is the sensory area next there is an area within which there are two particular areas and this area is what is called as a vasomotor center and we have two areas here one is the pressar area and one is the depressor area uh, the pressar area is almost similar to the vasoconstrictor area because this pressar area the neurons arising from the pressar area are again going to innervate the sympathetic nervous system and uh, the these neurons are also tonically active and whenever there is stimulation of the pressar area again this is going to cause an increase in the heart rate increase in the force of contraction as well as vasoconstriction now there is one more area here which is called as the depressor area now whenever we stimulate this depressor area this depressor area inhibits the pressar area okay so this is the second area and then there is a third area here which is seen in this green color and this is what is called as cardiac vagal center or this is also called as the cardiac inhibitory center so whenever the nucleus tractus solitarius is going to cause stimulation of this cardiac vagal center there is going to be in turn stimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system that means there is stimulation of the vagus here and whenever there is stimulation of the vagus there is a decrease in the heart rate and this cardiac inhibitory center or the cardiac vagal center is located in a nucleus which is called as nucleus vagus okay so this is one more school of thought with respect to the vasomotor center but i'll be going ahead with this model of the cardiovascular regulatory area okay so next let's see the first reflex which is called as the baroreceptor reflex so these baroreceptors are basically located in two important locations one is the carotid sinus now what is this carotid sinus uh, this carotid sinus is a small dilated area just at the beginning of the internal carotid artery like just after the bifurcation of the common carotids into external and internal just at the root of the internal carotid artery there is a small dilatation and in this dilatation we have the receptors the baroreceptors so this is what is called as the carotid sinus and next location is in the wall of the aortic arch so these are called as the aortic arch receptors so this is the location now what is the stimulus so these are going to get stimulated by stretch whenever there is stretching of the blood vessels like this is the blood vessel and like in the wall of the blood vessels are these receptors located so whenever this blood vessel is stretched so what is it which causes the stretch the stretch is caused by an increase in the blood pressure okay so the stretch could be because of increase in the blood pressure so increase in the blood pressure causes stretch a decrease in the blood pressure is going to reduce the stretch so both of these are the stimulus so that's why basically the baroreceptors are sensing the pressures that's why they are called as baro baro means pressure and that's why these receptors are also called as the pressure receptors so whenever there is stretching or less amount of stretching there are impulses generated in the afferent nerves and there are two afferent nerves which carry the impulses to the center the carotid sinus receptors the afferent nerve for the carotid sinus receptors is our ninth cranial nerve which is the glossopharyngeal nerve and uh, the afferent for the aortic arch receptor is the vagus nerve or the 10th cranial nerve and these afferent nerves are going to at last terminate in what is called as the nucleus tractus solitarius okay now let's try and understand the baroreceptor reflex 
uh, I recommend you take a pen and the paper and follow this flow chart. So now let's see how these baroreceptor reflexes are going to act whenever there is a reduction in the blood pressure. So whenever there is a reduction in the blood pressure, what is going to happen? There is less amount of stretching of the baroreceptors. So whenever there is a less amount of stretching of the baroreceptors, the impulses which are generated in the baroreceptors and hence conveyed via the afferent nerves are less. So we have less number of impulses which are generated in the afferent nerves which are the 9th and the 10th cranial nerves and this less number of impulses are now going to the nucleus tractus solitarius which is the sensory area. Now the nucleus tractus solitarius has to modulate the activity of the both vasoconstrictor as well as the vasodilator regions. Now what does the nucleus tractus solitarius does is it is going to activate the vasoconstrictor region okay so whenever there is activation of the vasoconstrictor region in turn there is going to be activation of the sympathetic nervous system so whenever there is activation of the sympathetic nervous system what all things are going to happen there is going to be vasoconstriction there is going to be an increase in the heart rate and there is going to be an increase in the force of contraction of the heart okay this translates to increase in the cardiac output and it is going to inhibit the vasodilatory area so inhibition of the vasodilatory area means inhibition of the parasympathetic nervous system the inhibition of the parasympathetic nervous system means nothing but there is inhibition of the vagus so whenever there is inhibition of the vagus the vagus is usually exerting an inhibitory effect on the heart so inhibition of the vagus is going to cause inhibition of this inhibition and hence there is going to be an increase in the heart rate so an increase in the heart rate vasoconstriction and increase in the force of contraction all these things are going to bring back the BP to the normal as simple as this okay now let's see what's going to happen when the blood pressure is going to rise there's an increase in the blood pressure so whenever there's an increase in the blood pressure there is more amount of stretch on the baroreceptors so more is the stretch on the baroreceptors more is the generation of the impulses where again in the afferent nerves that is the ninth and the tenth cranial nerves so more is the generation of the impulses these impulses again reach the nucleus tractus solitarius now what do the nucleus tractus solitarius do the nucleus tractus solitarius does two things here it is going to stimulate the vasodilatory area okay and we also have the vasoconstrictory area now i have told you whenever there is a stimulation of the vasodilatory area this vasodilatory area is going to cause inhibition of the vasoconstrictor area and not only that the nucleus tractus solitarius also directly inhibits the vasoconstrictor area okay so when the vasoconstrictor area is inhibited there is loss of the sympathetic vasoconstrictor tone and there is inhibition of the sympathetic nervous system so whenever there is an inhibition of the sympathetic nervous system this is going to cause vasodilatation this also causes a reduction in the heart rate and it also causes reduction in the force of contraction of the heart which is nothing but a reduction in the cardiac output and whenever there is stimulation of the vasodilatory area there is in turn stimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system which is nothing but stimulation of the vagus so whenever there is stimulation of the vagus what effect the vagus has on the heart rate it is going to decrease the heart rate. reduction in the heart rate 
vasodilatation, reduction in the force of contraction and hence reduction in the cardiac output, all these three things are going to decrease the blood pressure. So this is how the baroreceptor mechanism is going to act and help in the regulation of the blood pressure. Next is the chemoreceptor reflex and the chemoreceptor reflex is going to operate best between 40 to 60 mmHg of the mean arterial pressure and the chemoreceptor reflex is mediated by the peripheral chemoreceptors which are nothing but the aortic body and the carotid body. The carotid body is located at the bifurcation of the common carotid artery and the aortic bodies are located along the arch of aorta. The carotid body is going to carry the sensation to the centers via the glossopharyngeal nerve and the aortic body is going to carry the sensation again via the vagus nerve. Now what is it which stimulates the chemoreceptor reflex is that or the chemoreceptors is that these chemoreceptors are going to sense change in the partial pressure of oxygen, carbon dioxide and the pH. What is it they exactly sense is fall in the partial pressure of oxygen, rise in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and acidosis. Okay, so whenever these things happen, what is going to happen is there is going to be stimulation of the chemoreceptors. So whenever the chemoreceptors are stimulated, they send the impulses to the two centers in the brain stem. One is the respiratory center, another one is the cardiac center, basically the nucleus tractus solitarius. So this causes stimulation of the respiratory center and then respiratory center is going to cause hyperventilation okay that is there is going to be increase in the rate as well as increase in the depth of breathing thus this helps in the correction of partial pressure of oxygen carbon dioxide and also the h plus concentration now this chemo chemoreceptors also going to stimulate the nucleus tractus solitarius. So, whenever there is a stimulation of the nucleus tractus solitarius, there is stimulation of the vasoconstrictor area and then there is inhibition of the vasodilator area. Whenever there is stimulation of the vasoconstrictor area, there is stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. Stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system again is going to cause vasoconstriction, it is going to cause an increase in the heart rate and it is also going to increase the force of contraction of the heart and inhibition of the vasodilatory area is nothing but inhibition of the parasympathetic nervous system and inhibition of the parasympathetic nervous system is again going to increase the heart rate. So, increase in the heart rate, vasoconstriction and increase in the force of contraction, all these things will try to bring the blood pressure up. The last reflex is what is called as the CNS ischemic response and this is the one which operates when the pressure falls very low, below 40 mmHg and it operates best between 15 to 20 mmHg. So, what is happening is till the pressure is maintained at 40 mmHg, the blood supply to the central nervous system is not compromised. But as soon as the pressure drops below 40 mmHg, the blood pressure to the central nervous system is now beginning to be compromised. So that means there is also less amount of blood flow to the vasomotor center. Now whenever there is a less amount of blood flow, the vasomotor center is suffering from hypoxia. Okay, Because of the sluggish blood flow, what is going to happen is the carbon dioxide which is going to get accumulated here is not going to be removed. So there is going to be an increase in the concentration of the carbon dioxide. And there is also going to be an increase in the concentration of the lactic acid. So, this increased carbon dioxide and the increased lactic acid is now going to profoundly stimulate the nucleus tractus solitarius. Okay. Now, stimulation of the nucleus tractus solitarius is going to cause profound stimulation of the vasoconstrictor region, and this is going to cause a very strong and an intense stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, 
and this in turn results in a very strong vasoconstriction increase in the heart rate and also a very strong increase in the force of contraction of the heart so this helps in rising the blood pressure profoundly sometimes the blood pressure rises to such an extent that this increase in the blood pressure is going to cause vaso occlusion so such strong is the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system and remember that the cns ischemic response is not going to operate in our day to day lives in order to maintain or regulate the blood pressure this is going to come into action in emergency and dire situations that's why the cns ischemic response is also called as the last ditch stand okay so these are the three important mechanisms which are helping in short term regulation of the blood pressure hope you have understood the concepts behind the short term regulation of the blood pressure if you have understood kindly hit the like button subscribe to my channel and share this video as much as possible thank you i will come back with the long term and the intermediate regulations of blood pressure within some time bye bye